What up, y'all? Happy Manna Monday. It is the last Monday of the month, and I am hype about the word that God has given me to give to you. So I'm not going to say nothing else. I'm going to go straight into this word. Let's go. Our Manna Monday thought is found in 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 and then verse 7. Verses 1 and then verse 7. The word of God says, then David said, is there yet anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Verse 7, David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show kindness to you for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and will restore to you all the land of your grandfather, Saul, and you shall eat at my table regularly. God, we thank you for being father, friend, counselor, advocate, whatever it is that we need in whatever moment. Thank you for being that. And we thank you for your word. Lord, let it, let it saturate our minds, our hearts, our emotions, our being so that we can be who you have called us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So last week we talked about John the Baptist and his being confident and secure in who God called him to be and who God did not call him to be. He made the way for Jesus. He was content about being the way maker. And when Jesus' star was rising, he was good with knowing that his star was descending because he knew that is what God had called him to be. He was secure in his calling and he knew his limitations and he was okay with them. And I wanted to linger in that a little bit because that really spoke to me last week, it had been speaking to me for the past few days. So I just wanted to linger a little more, but come to it from a different angle with David and Jonathan's friendships. So I want to add a little spice, a little seasoning, and hopefully it'll hit you the way it hit me. So we come to this passage where David is king and he pauses for a moment to bless somebody in Saul's house. But the reason why he is blessing somebody in Saul's house is, as verse 1 tells us, for Jonathan's sake. Now, if you know anything about David, his friendship with Jonathan is a unique display of brotherhood of friendship and so i want to take you quickly to your left um to first samuel ch chapter 18 starting at verse 1 it reads now it came about when he had finished speaking to saul that the saul soul of jonathan was knit to the soul of david and jonathan loved him as himself saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house then jonathan made a covenant with david because he loved him as himself Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, including his sword and his bow and his belt. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and prospered. And Saul sent him over the men of war. And it was pleasing in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. So we see the context and the anchor of Saul, uh, David and Jonathan's friendship. Jonathan sacrificed his well-being, his safety, his familial ties, and his rightful position on the throne for the sake of David. He chose to abdicate what rightfully belonged to him, the throne, being king of Israel, because he saw what God was doing in David's life. He was so attuned to the voice of God that he knew this is not for me. I will sacrifice what rightfully belongs to me. Just as John the Baptist, in the same vein as John the Baptist, though John the Baptist did not sacrifice something that belonged to him. Jonathan sacrificed something that rightfully, legally, spiritually belonged to him because he knew and he was devoted to what God was doing in David's life. His relationship with his father Saul was so soured as a result of his relationship with David that at one point, Saul calls his own son, Jonathan, the son of a whore. And so now we come back to 2 Samuel chapter 9. And David, as he carries on his duty as king, pauses and says, Who can I repay for what Jonathan did for me? Who can I show kindness to as a result of the friend that Jonathan was, the brother that Jonathan was to me? And so we meet Mephibosheth, who is the grandson of Saul, the son of Jonathan. He's a man who is crippled in both feet. He is an outcast. He is ostracized by society. Yet because of who he is, as Jonathan's son, David shows him kindness. So there are two points that I want us to take away from this. The first point is 
recognizing the impact our character, our integrity, our kindness can have on our future generations. And two, focusing and emphasizing kindness as a generational currency. First point, I want us to focus on the kind of people we are becoming and who we choose to live our lives as because of the impact it will have on our children and our children's children. David had no idea who Mephibosheth was. The first time he meets this man is right here in this story. But Mephibosheth goes from outcast to sitting at the king's table simply because of who his father was, the kind of life that his father chose to live, and the type of person that his father chose to be to David. So Mephibosheth gets to inherit a life that he worked nothing for simply because of the character of his father. And number two, we talk so much about generational wealth in this day and age and I want to leave LLCs and properties and businesses and bank accounts and money to your children. And I ain't knocking it. Do what you got to do. That is important. That is vital to the survival of our children and our children's children. However, as disciples of the Messiah, I want us to treat equally or more importantly, the impact that our personalities, our characters will have on our children and choosing to see that as a form of generational wealth. I want us to emphasize kindness as something to leave, as a legacy to leave for our children and our children's children. And this verse is personal to me because I have lived and I have reaped the benefits of it because I've had people do me favors. I've had people treat me differently because of who my grandmother and my mom were to them. I've had people meet me and see my last name or see me and see the genetic resemblance and say, oh, I love you without even knowing who I am or do something for me because of who my mom has been to them or who my grandmother was to them. I want us to be those kind of people who emphasize and prioritize character, kindness, compassion, integrity, selflessness, love, grace, mercy, so that when people meet your children long after you are gone, they will treat them with kindness. They will give them opportunities that they don't have to work for because of who you chose to be to them. I want us, I want our children and our children's children to be victims of spiritual nepotisms nepotism. I want them to be able to sit at certain tables and be able to uh, inherit certain favors and to be able to grasp certain opportunities because of who their mom, their grandmother, their cousin, their auntie, their uncle, their sister, and their brother was to someone. So as you go about this day, as you go about this week, remember kindness. Remember the impact that the life that you choose to live now will have on your children and your children's children and then their children. And then as you focus on passing wealth down to your children, I want you and I want us to focus on allowing our children and our children's children's character to have an impact on this world before their currency has an impact on this world. Kindness as a generational currency. So be aware of your impact, be mindful of your impact on your children and what that will have on their future and emphasize and put more importance on kindness as a generational currency. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I pray that you will like it, that you will share it and allow it to be a blessing to others. And if you would like to contribute to this ministry financially, you can do so in the ways that are outlined below. And if you have any prayer requests, continue to leave them in the chat. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for this word. Lord, I pray that we will truly embody kindness and prioritize kindness above LLCs and businesses and business accounts and all the ways that we see generational wealth, that we will see kindness as a form and the most important form of generational 
wealth and allow that to have an impact on our future generations. Lord, I come to you on behalf of the Leah as she goes about her last year of college. I come to you on behalf of the Jemison family, protection over, over all our families, our church family, Sister Ward, Faithful Dove, her, herself, her children, her grandchildren. I pray for safe traveling mercies for all those who are traveling. I pray for Corey's family as well as Corey's schooling as he continues to matriculate through school. I pray for the Christie family. I pray for the Edwards and Crockett family as, as they are grieving the loss of a loved one. And Lord, I come to you also on behalf of Amanda Keller as she is fighting a health situation, Lord, I just pray that you will intervene in her life and all of those who may need you in a special way, Lord, both the spoken request and an unspoken request. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.